client of mine is having a little trouble with a text entry box and subsequently displaying the contents of that text entry box on a later slide. So I thought I would do a quick video that explains what I think you need to know about text entry boxes here. So I'm going to start off by creating a, we've got a responsive design here. We can just do a single fluid box is sufficient. And what we'll do is we will add our text entry box to that particular, whoa, that's huge. Let's resize that a little bit here. So it's a little bit more reasonable in size. I'm going to uncheck maintain aspect ratio. So the text entry box fills the uh, entire fluid box. And you know what, let's add a little bit of padding just so it doesn't fill up so much space. There we go. So that's pretty good. We got a nice large submit button there. We can resize that a little bit if we think it might be important. Maybe what I'll do is I'll make the font size for that submit button 18. That looks pretty good. So let's add another slide to that, another blank slide. And here what we'll do, we'll also have a single fluid box. I don't think it matters which orientation it is because it's just going to be the one. And what we'll do is we'll display a text caption in here. And let's choose something a little less old school and just go with transparent for now. So let's go back to our text entry box on the first page here. A couple things to, to consider. So the maximum number of characters that a text entry box can input and the maximum number of characters that a variable can store. I honestly don't know the answer to that question. And quite frankly, if, if one of you knows the answer to that question and whether it's different from from one version of Adobe Captivate to another, I'd love to know the answer to that question. If you'd like to put that in the comments below, that could be quite helpful. But today, for argument's sake, what we'll do is we'll assume that 500 characters is enough for this particular situation. So let's start by selecting our text entry box. We're going to do a couple things here. First thing I think that we should do is probably put some default text. So we'll say input your answer here. And I think what I'll do is I'll make that a little bit larger as well. We'll make that 18. We'll add a little bit of extra information, 500 characters. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on more options and we're going to input that maximum length. So we're going to limit our users. You can probably input a heck of a lot more than 500 characters, but for today's purposes, we'll set it at 500. We don't really want an answer that's more than 500 characters. And I'll click on OK. Uh, by the way, the other thing I like to do with a, a text entry box is make sure that it's displayed for the rest of the slide so that uh, users don't have it disappear on them partway through a slide if they decide to extend the length of that slide. Under actions, we'll have the uh, on success action to be go to the next slide. And we're going to also check off show scroll bar. Uh, we probably won't need a scroll bar for 500 characters. However, the advantage of having that checked off is that uh, once we've filled up a row, it will return to start a new row for you when that's checked off. So that's perfect. In this case here, I think we've got everything set up for the input here. So now we'll go to this slide and we'll display the contents of that text entry box. You know, a text entry box creates a variable uh, to store the information in, and you can access that and display it on screen here. So let's take a look at this. Um, first of all, I'm just going to add some padding to that fluid box again, just so we have some extra room here for our text caption, a little white space around it here. And what we'll do, we'll, we'll bump this up to 18 and we will select the insert variable icon from the properties panel. And that will allow us to find that text entry box variable. There it is. Now, before you press OK, please note that the maximum length for this display, not for the variable, but the display is set right here. So I'm going to add another zero there before I click OK so that 
our maximum length of this variable displayed on the page will be 500 characters. So I'm going to click on OK, and that creates the text entry box there. Let's um, just justify this to the left and to the top so it should match the other slide. Let's take a look at this project now and see how it works. So there we go, we've got our default message which is reminding us to limit ourselves to 500 characters. I'm just going to start typing in some stuff here. Um, I'm going to use the name of my office assistants here, Molly and Lucy. And we'll just paste that in a whole bunch of times until it stops us. Notice that, you know, once I get to the end of a row, it starts a new line for me. Now I've run out of space here. Uh, so let's just put a bunch of X's in so we can mark where the end of that 500 characters is. I'll click Submit now. And there we go. It's all displayed. So if you keep the two numbers the same, you should be okay. And again, if someone knows that there's an upper limit to these number of characters that can either be input into a text entry box, or if there's a limit to the number of characters that can be stored in a variable, I'm sure that uh, I, as well as all my viewers, would like to know that. Feel free to put that in the comments below. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com, follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.